In today's lesson, we're going to learn about extreme values, also known as extrema points, and absolute max and minimums. This goes by a lot of names, but it all means the same thing. Let's talk about it. First, we're going to start with some definitions, starting with absolute maximum. Absolute being spelled ABS. Absolute maximum. The absolute maximum is just the highest y value within the domain of the function. Similarly, the absolute minimum is the lowest value in the domain. These two can also be notated mathematically. For an absolute maximum, f of x, every point f of x is less than or equal to f of c, aka our point. And similarly, absolute minimum is when f of x is greater than or equal to f of c at every point. Let's draw a graph to make this a little bit easier visually. Here we just have a regular xy plane. And you know what, let's get green out to draw this graph. We're gonna draw a simple parabola looking curve like this. I'm gonna mark three points on here. This point is two comma five. This point here is zero comma one. And this point here is negative one comma two. You know what, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this point down a little bit just to make it look a little better. So this point is still negative one comma two. In this graph, two five is our absolute maximum. It has the highest y value given the x value in this graph. And our absolute minimum is zero one here. It has the lowest y value given the x value of zero. So let's notate that here, absolute max, and notate that here, absolute min. So this value is our absolute max and this one is our absolute minimum. I do wanna make one note though. Say instead of a closed point, this was an open point here at 2, 5. This function would no longer have an, have an absolute maximum because at the open interval, we can't actually count that as part of f of x. There would be no absolute maximum. So now that we've talked about absolute maximums and minimums, I wanna talk about the extreme value theorem. It's kind of part of the title of this video, so let's talk about it. The extreme value theorem, also known as EVT, states the following. If f is continuous on a closed interval a to b, with, then there will always be an absolute maximum and absolute minimum. Remember, this is only for a closed interval. On an open interval, it could be a little different. So we've already talked about absolute maximums and minimums, but what about local maxes and mins? Let's talk about those next. These are also both known as relative minimum and maximums, by the way. Local is just a more common name and a little shorter, so I tend to write it because it's shorter. The local minimum or the relative minimum is the lowest point in an open interval. And similarly, the local maximum or the relative maximum is the highest point in an open interval. So let's draw a graph to make this a little bit easier to visualize. This time I feel like using red instead of green. Why not? Just to denote our graph. Our graph starts here and then goes up and goes down and back up and then way back down. This is our graph. We're going to denote this with different points. Here is point A. This point right here is point B. This point down here is point C. This point here is point, oh no, this point, sorry. This point is point D. And down here, way at the end of our graph is point F. So take a look at this graph and try to figure out what the local max and minimum are and the absolute max and minimum are. Think you got it? Let's talk about it. So point A is actually not a local max or local minimum. Point D is the absolute max. As you can see within this open interval, it is the highest point on the graph, which means that point B is the local maximum. Point F is the lowest point on our graph that we've drawn here, making it the absolute minimum, which makes point C over here the local minimum. It makes a little bit more sense visually. Within this little area, this is the highest point and this is the lowest point. But across the whole graph, this is the highest point and this is the lowest point. And it's kind of the idea we're going for here. One thing to know as well, all absolute maximum and minimum points can also be local maximum or minimum points, but not all local max and minimum points can be absolute max and minimum points. Just something to keep in mind. Now that we have the maximum stuff out of the way, we need to talk about critical points. So let's do that now. So what are critical points? Glad you asked. I'm gonna tell you in just a second here. If f of c, so our function at some point c is equal to zero, or it doesn't exist at a point, say we had an open point on a graph like this, like this would, if we were to try to find f of c at that point, it would not exist because this is an open interval here. Then that point is a critical point. It's actually a pretty simple definition. If the point at f of c is equal to zero or doesn't exist, it's a critical point. And we'll talk a little bit more about critical points later in this video because we'll need them to solve some of these extreme value questions. Also, if f prime of c, aka the derivative of f of c, does not exist, that means that the derivative is a vertical line. What this tells us is that every endpoint on a graph is critical. That is important to keep in mind when we talk about solving these critical point questions, which we will do later in this video. If f prime of c, f, that kind of looks like a t, f prime of c equals zero, then remember our derivative will be a horizontal line. The slope of a horizontal line is zero. 
And whenever we see f prime of z at zero or a horizontal derivative, that means that there is a minimum or a maximum at that given point, and we need to check it because that's also a critical point. We're gonna talk about one more theorem, and then we'll go on to solving one problem for this video. The last theorem we're gonna talk about in this video is the critical number theorem, and it states the following. If f prime of c is equal to zero or doesn't exist, that point is a critical point. That's what we were talking about just a minute ago. This theorem just reinforces that. But it also tells us that C is a critical number. Just some extra terminology for you to know. So this theorem is pretty simple, but very important to know when talking about extreme values. Let's do one example problem for this video. In this example problem, we need to find all the absolute maximum and minimum values to the graph x minus two sine of theta across the closed interval zero to two pi. And we're gonna solve this problem without writing a graph down. So let's do that now. First, based on the critical number theorem, we know that the only points that are gonna be critical is wherever f prime of x is equal to zero or doesn't exist in the first place. We also know that every endpoint is a critical point. So we already have two of our critical points here. Over here, I'm gonna write down all of the critical points that we know of. The two that we know of already are x is equal to zero and two pi. But are there more? Well, we need to figure that out. We know that f of x is equal to x minus two sine of x. Let's take the derivative of that and figure out where f prime of x is equal to zero so we can find all of our critical points. First of all, f prime of x is equal to the derivative of x minus two sine of x. And this is equal to the derivative of x is just equal to one. And the derivative of negative two sine of x is equal to negative two cosine of x. So this is what f prime of x equals. Now we need to figure out where this equals zero. So let's do that now. First of all, let's subtract one from both sides. So this now turns into negative two cosine of x is equal to negative one. And to isolate our cosine of x, let's divide by negative two. So cosine of x is equal to one half. So now that we know f prime of x equals zero when cosine of x is equal to one half, use your unit circle to figure out where cosine of x equals one half. Looking at our unit circle, we find that x must equal pi over three and five pi divided by three. And these are our other two critical points. When we plug these two points into our cosine of x, cosine of x ends up equaling one half. And whenever cosine of x equals one half, f prime of x is equal to zero, and those are critical points. So let's write that down over here along with the other two critical points. So our critical points are now zero, two pi, pi divided by three, and five pi divided by three. So now we just need to check all these points and see if they are local maximums or minimums. So I'm gonna draw a very simple T chart here. On this side we'll have x, and on this side we'll have x minus two sine of x. Remember, we are looking for the absolute maximum and minimums of x minus two sine of x, not f prime of x here. So this is where we're gonna plug in our values. At x equals zero, x minus two sine of x is equal to zero. At x equals pi divided by three, x minus two sine of x is equal to pi divided by three minus two sine pi over three. Two sine pi over three is equal to square root of three. So this value is equal to pi over three divided by square root of three. And to save you the time, that's equal to negative 0.68. I just barely ran out of room there. Now for five pi over three. When x is equal to five pi divided by three, x minus two sine of x is equal to five pi divided by three minus two sine of five pi over three, which is equal to positive square root of three. And once again, this comes out to 6.96, 6.968. Sorry, I just kind of forgot the last decimal value there. And our last critical point, x is equal to two pi. When x is equal to two pi, x minus two sine of x is equal to two pi. Remember, when we plug in two pi to sine over x, that's the same thing as plugging in zero to sine over x. Negative two times sine of zero is equal to negative two times zero, which is equal to zero. So we just end up having two pi minus zero, which is just two pi. And two pi is roughly equal to 6.3 yeah, not repeating, just continuing. I don't know the exact decimal. So based on this t-chart, we now know our relative maximums and minimum. Our relative maximum is five pi over three with a value of 6.968. And our relative minimum is negative 0.68, which corresponds to pi over three. So these two values are the local maximum and minimums, AKA the relative max and minimums. 
I hope that lesson was helpful for you guys. If you want more lessons, consider checking out this playlist and consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot. We're almost to 300. That's pretty awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video.